Devils out of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the Indiana Hoosiers representing the Big Ten. Duke got here by defeating Texas A&M and Xavier. Indiana got by Fairfield in the first round and came from behind to nip Auburn last week, 107 to 90. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Bill Cunningham. The dominant theme this week has been the relationship between head coach Bob Knight and head coach Mike Krzyzewski. They were once coach and assistant, and they have really become more like brothers throughout their relationship, Bill. Absolutely, Vern, but you know that friendship and brotherhood, that was left back at the hotels because when they got on those team buses, they had their game faces on, and for two hours, they're going to compete against each other as hard as they possibly can. The relationship began back in the late 60s at West Point when Bob Knight, a young man in his 20s, was the head coach, and Mike Krzyzewski was a shooting guard who became a defensive specialist for Bob Knight. Krzyzewski later became his assistant here in Indiana in 1975, also helped him out with the U.S. Olympic team in 84, and got the Duke job because of the strong recommendation of Bob Knight to Duke officials. For the Blue Devils, Danny Ferry, Billy King, John Smith, Tommy Amaker, and Kevin Strickland are the starting five. And for the Indiana Hoosiers, Daryl Thomas, Rick Calloway, Dean Garrett in the center, Keith Smart, fresh from a great game, and the first-team All-American, Steve Alford. Bobby Knight has 13 former assistants currently serving as head coaches in NCAA basketball. He's met five of them previously, and he is undefeated, 5-0. and zero. But this is the first time he's ever met Krzyzewski as a head coach, and it's also the first time that Duke and Indiana, Bill, have ever played. And there's a two teams that both coaches love their man-to-man -man defense. I think right now Duke is a better man-to-man -man defensive team than Indiana, but Indiana is just really on a roll offensively at this point. We know about Tommy Amaker in the backcourt. We know about Steve Alford. Indiana's the favorite. If Duke is to win, who might we key in on for them as uh, necessarily having a good game? I think Kevin Strickland's going to have to have a big offensive game for this ball club. He struggled in his last ball game against Xavier, shot 2 for 13 from the field, and they're going to need him to come off those screens, look for those shots, and we'll see early if he's aggressive. Even if he misses the first couple, he's got to develop that mentality of a scorer, and, and that is just keep shooting until it goes in. Amaker, who is starting his 138th consecutive game for the Duke Blue Devils, controls the tip and brings it across the timeline, guarded by Steve Alford. Barry to Am Amaker. Now, one thing they're, they're going to need, Danny Ferry to establish himself on the inside there. They're going to need his offensive punch. Here's Strickland. He was 2 for 13 last week. Short with the first shot of the game. Now, Mike Krzyzewski was very concerned with this young Duke ball club that they might be nervous out there on the on the floor. So we could see an early timeout. Keith Smart, first score of the game, and Indiana takes the lead. Keith Smart, one of two junior college transfers in the starting lineup for Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. Now, Duke is in a passing game, and we see the man-to-man -man defense being applied by Indiana. Strickland looks underneath for John Smith. Billy King, not that much of a scoring threat. High off the glass, and Smith can't control the rebound. Smart on the run, pushes it up, and he stepped on the line. First turnover of the game for Indiana. Well, we've seen the first two shots by Duke. Players did not have good control, and it was poor shot selection. Our officials tonight, by the way, are Don Shea of Atlanta, Georgia, Gene Monji of Rochester, New York, and Jim Howell of Washington, D.C. 2-0 Indiana leads just under the 19-minute mark. Earlier tonight, LSU knocked off the ball, travel. And the turnovers are even at 1-1. One one. Well, this is the healthiest this Duke ball club has been for the last week or two. They've had injuries with... Uh, Billy King has broken his wrist against Notre Dame earlier in the year. Ferry has a hip pointer. And uh, Quint Snyder, he had the flu, and Strickland had a dislocated shoulder. So they're pretty optimistic about Billy this King, three-on-one break. King all the way up and missed the shot. And you notice how he cradled the ball in that one hand. He's still having problems with that left wrist. Garrett, smart, traveled. Second turnover, Indiana. Second turnover by Keith Smart. And Bob Knight is off the bench. 
working the officials early. That's Gene Mangi. I think it's also going to be interested, interesting how the officials call this game. Because in the last game where Indiana against Auburn, that was very physical, almost a few fights. So I wonder if they're going to call it close to let the players know that they're not going to allow that kind of stuff. John Smith ties it up at two. What a story he is. Last year he played a total of 91 minutes for this Duke Blue Devil team. And here he is, such a force on the inside for this club. This is a 2-2 ball game now. 18 minutes to go, first half. Alford penetrates. Shot is short. Follow is good. Dean Garrett, the second of the J.C. transfers, has meant so much to this Hoosier team, giving them a presence in the center at 6-10. 4-2 Indiana, 17.45 to go. Loose ball, smart. All the way up and in. Move by Smart protecting that basketball because Amaker has those quick hands and he loves to go for the steal. We see that Duke is doubling, I mean, Indiana is doubling down when the, when the ball goes into the post. Billy King gets it back to Kevin Strickland, number 31, junior out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. Now Danny Ferry for three. He'll shoot that with ease. Uh, you don't see many 6'10 players shooting that three-point shot. But Danny Ferry has the, got the green light to shoot that any time he feels he has it. Danny Ferry came into the game 21 of 59, so it's not an uncommon shot. Now they're saying it's a two-pointer. Well, again, that line, Vern, it's a shame. We see the players wearing white sneakers. If they had an orange line or a red line, it would make it a lot easier for the officials to distinguish. Smart, half the basket, charging foul. Well, Keith Smart has really come out on fire. You know, in his last ball game, he had 15 assists to break an Indiana record. Now we'll see his penetration to the basket. Danny Ferry has that position and draws the foul. Good call by the official. He had released the ball before the contact. That makes it an 8-4 ball game, 17 minutes to go. In this Midwest Regional Semifinal, the winner faces LSU on Sunday. Louisiana State knocked off the ball by five points in the first game. Indiana with a four-point lead. John Smith, another one. Well, what's nice about this for Duke, it's forcing Dean Garrett, who's playing, to, to come out on the court. He likes to stay in the lane. He's an excellent shot blocker. Matter of fact, he's blocked 82 shots so far this season. There's Garrett. Followed by Smart. Smart has been an early spark plug. Well, he has a vertical jump of over 40 inches. And you see that great leaping ability. You must check him off the offensive boards. 10-6. Duke trails underneath to John Smith, who's got four points. Back to Strickland. That's for three. That's what he needs. As I mentioned before, he doesn't have that scores mentality, Vernon. A scores mentality, I can tell you I understand what that is. It's you just keep firing until it starts falling. And he just doesn't have that ability. Strickland with a foul. That's the first on him. Uh, you don't want to commit a foul that far out of the court, 30 feet away from the basket. You know, Rick Calloway's having a great playoff in this tournament, but he's surely not going to be a factor from that range. First substitution of the game now, Billy King is down on the bench, and Robert Bricky, number 21, a freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina, is in. Underneath the Garrett, over Smith, got it. Well, if Smith allows Garrett to catch the ball that deep in the post, he's going to have a long night for himself. Ferry looks underneath for Bricky, back to Strickland now, 12-9. Danny Ferry, who missed most of the last two games with a hip pointer, there's another turnover. There was an example where John Smith had good position, but sometimes you have to give up your position for possession of the basketball. And what I mean is come out and meet the pass a little bit better. This is a Duke team that is forcing opponents almost 20 turnovers per game. The turnover's now three and three. Galloway. Tip almost knocked in by Dukes. Robert Bricky, but he comes down with a rebound. 12-9, 15-20. Remaining in the first half, another three-pointer. Tommy Amaker. And we're tied at 12. Now here's the only returning player from last year's great ball club that was a starter. And he has just changed his role with this club from being the assist man and getting the ball to, to Dawkins and Allery. Now he's got to go out and score some points. Alford puts it up after drawing the foul from Tommy Amaker. And he'll shoot a couple. How about Dale Brown? They defeat DePaul 63-58. We saw him in the lobby of the hotel yesterday, and he said, 
he said that he believes he should be in the Final Four and he expects to be there. And he was telling the story after the last game that uh, when they were going into the press room, that the players, there was no real emotion or excitement. And he says, you know, I got the feeling right then and there that this team feels that they have a little further to go in this tournament. Well, they knocked off the ball in the first game here by five. Steve Alford hitting almost 90% of his free throws for his career. You know, it would take us around 20 minutes to go over all the things he's been able to achieve at Indiana. But, you know, it's amazing is he's a better three-point shooter than he is from the two-point range. He's shooting shot for the year 53% from the three-point area and only 47% from the two-point area. Alford's one out of two makes it a 13-12 Indiana lead. 14-49 to go first half. That shot is short. Tip up. Tricky. Foul. He'll shoot a couple. Foul is on Key Smart, number 23. Well, this young man, Robert Bricky, during the regular season only averaged 5.7 points per game, and he gets to the tournament. Now, you're supposed to be nervous as a freshman entering this point. Right. He's averaging 12 points a game, shooting 79% from the field. <laughs> I mean, that's... I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski is ecstatic, but shocked as well. It's just the NCAAs. And Bricky misses the first. This is the Duke team under Mike Krzyzewski, 37-3 a year ago. Runners up to Louisville for the national championship. They lost the four starters. Dawkins, Henderson, Billis, and Allen. And they come back to go 24-8 and eight and advance to the round of 16. And they're trying to bid for the round of eight. Timeout. First half, we're tied 13-13. Field goals, Duke has hit two. And Indiana, not any yet. Indiana six of nine from the field and Duke five of nine. Substitution now, Martin Nesley at seven foot two. A senior from Whitehall, Ohio has come into the Duke lineup. He's underneath number 51. Dean Garrett. Daryl Thomas, offensive foul. Very interesting. Early in this game, we see the coaching philosophy is different. Now, we'll, first of all, we'll watch Dwayne Thomas try to power it inside. Good position by Nesley. Is we see that Mike Krzyzewski is rotating his players early, where Bobby Knight is staying with that starting lineup. Now, a key matchup to watch is Keith Smart. He's got two personal fouls, and if he picks up that third, he could really change that game for Indiana. And he lays off Robert Bricky as Bricky drives the lane. It'll be out of bounds, and Duke will inbound it. Well, I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski let him know that if you get a chance and you're matched up in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Smart, try and take the ball to him. See if we can pick up that third foul against him. Barry inbounds. Billy King, number 55, got the roll, puts it in, and Duke is on top. Try to figure this game out. He misses a wide-open layup in the open court, and he comes back with a finger roll. Now, Billy King guards Alford as Duke stays more or less in a man-for-man, and the shot by Smart won't go. Well, Keith Smart made an excellent move. He ended up with a mismatch. He had Danny Ferry out on the court playing him, and he looked to penetrate and beat him with his quickness and was able to draw that foul. Keith Smart out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where he played only three games his senior year in high school because of a broken arm. Wound up at Garden City Junior College in the state of Kansas before coming to Indiana. And has really given them something that Alford can concentrate more on shooting instead of playmaking. Two more athletes yeah. out there on the court. Smart gets them both. And we're tied again at 15-15 with 13-50 to go. First half, Run one twist to Bill Cunningham from Cincinnati. Barry back to Billy King. And we see Indiana double-teaming every time the ball goes inside. There you saw the vertical leap of Smart. How about Amaker with the retaliation? And Offer takes it all the way, blocking foul. That'll be the fourth team foul on Duke. Non-shooting foul. And still excellent defense by, by Billy King. Forced the pass, just was a step late trying to draw that charge. Once again, Mike Krzyzewski goes to his bench, and Nesley is out. John Smith, number 33, at 6 7, back in at center. Well, Duke is deeper on the bench than Indiana. And we've seen so far in this tournament, uh, Bobby Knight has not gone to his bench very much at all. Doesn't have a deep one. Alford guarded by Amaker now. Here's Rick Calloway, turnaround inside by Thomas. Nice move. 
Thomas does such a, the two big guys, there's one thing they do, both of them, that I love. Garrett and, and Thomas have that ability when they catch the ball down low, they never put it on the floor. It's just one strong move to the basket. 17-15, Indiana. Hanneker from the corner, that's two. Well, that extra pass at the offensive end of the court. Billy King knew that wasn't his shot, and he just swung it to Amaker for the easy shot. All, all started, excuse me, Vern, with the double team and Ferry swinging it out quickly. 17-17, here's Rick Calloway, the sophomore from Cincinnati, playing before a huge group of his family and friends here tonight. Offensive foul. There's part of the family, that's Rick Calloway's father. And they've taken up a whole row. Not too excite, right, excited right now, are they? No, not by what's gone on so far. That's you know, his sister to the left. You know, you notice one thing with these teams defensively. They love to force people to the baseline, trying to use the baseline as another defensive player. Danny Ferry for three. Oh, he's got about as pretty touch on that long shot for a 6'10 man as I've seen. What a player. You know, coming out of high school, he was... Rated the number one high school player in the country coming out of DeMatha High School in Washington. Duke is a perfect three of three from three-point range. All for triple team position it off. And finds Garrett. Well, right there, he showed something that Bobby Knight's teams always do, and they practice it on a daily basis. On a daily basis, and that is the ball fake. They'll show you the ball. If you leave your feet at all defensively, they put it on the floor, reestablish their position with it. We saw Alfred, and he made a great pass. Foul was on Alfred as Bobby Knight looked on. That's the fourth team foul. And Duke will inbound. You notice Ferry sometimes looks for a return pass in this play. Absolutely. Many times they'll look for him to step right back in the lane. He comes out. Amaker takes the shot instead and hits it. That's another three-pointer there, four for four. You know, Mike Krzyzewski was so concerned about this young ball club out here and how they would respond and would nerves be a factor. Well, they've really settled down after the first minute. 23-19, four-point Duke lead. Kevin Strickland draws the foul. Duke, a perfect four of four. And Indiana's known as the three-point club. Now Robert Bricky back in and Danny Ferry will sit down. Now, one big thing when you look at this Duke club, they would love to, to keep their opponents under 70 points because their record during the course of the regular season was 21 and 1 against opponents when they held, kept them under 70 points. Freshman Robert Bricky gets the steal at six Indiana turnovers already in the first half. What we're seeing defensively, a much more aggressive Duke Blue Devil team out over playing, denying the passes. John Smith. Thought he was going to have a chance for the three-pointer. Very interesting what Mike Krzyzewski is doing here. He's taking Smith a few steps out on the floor to draw Garrett out of that lane area and force him to play him head up. Now, he hit those two jump shots early, so now Garrett has to come out and put some pressure on him, and he beats him with a good move and is able to draw the foul. Billy King gets a rest, and Quinn Snyder, the sophomore from Mercer Island, Washington, comes into the lineup for the first time. He was the young man who had the severe virus last week and tried to play in those two games, but uh, really couldn't contribute. Krzyzewski just turned 40. Bobby Knight, now 46. Seems like he's been coaching for 40 of those 46 years. You know, it's interesting. Billy King, who will play Alfred during the course of the game, he felt like playing Alfred, they asked him to make a comparison. He said, I think it'll be something like running after Larry Bird. <laughs> There's Alfred underneath. Rebound, Thomas up and in. And it's back to a four-point deficit now for Indiana, 25-21. Smith, double team. Oh, he's had a terrific game, Bill. Oh, yeah, he showed the ball one side and took it to the other side to avoid the block shot by Gary. John Smith averages 12 points per game. He's got eight of the 27 Duke points in the first half. Callaway. There's a near steal by Bricky again. You just see the aggressiveness of this Duke ball club. 
And the nice thing is what Mike Krzyzewski's doing right now because he has that bench avail available to him. He's rotating and he's keeping those fresh bodies in there. First substitution for the Hoosiers, Joe Hillman is in for Key Smart. Hillman, a junior out of Glendale, California, actually a sophomore in eligibility, redshirted last year. So, Indiana has Alford with the ball. Also, Callaway, Thomas, Hillman with the ball right now, and Garrett. Alford. Rebound. Strickland. Foul. Callaway. That's the seventh Indiana team foul. So, we'll go to the line and shoot it. Foul from Rick Callaway. This third. Foul number six from Indiana. Oh, they will not shoot it. Sixteen foul instead of seven. But well, we see how they're switching constantly someone playing Alfred. Not one player can play him through the course of the game. In my opinion, he reminds me a lot of John Havlicek, the old teammate of Bobby Knights at Ohio State. John Smith in double figures. He's got 10. The pre-mat major out of Fort Washington, Maryland has ignited this Duke lead. Alfred has only one so far in the game. 9.53 to go, first half. Charging foul. Boy, this kid, Rickle, has come off the bench and really ignited this team at the defensive end of the floor. Offensive foul, 29-21. Timeout has been called. Nothing escapes the eye of maximum. The world's first SLR with built-in... We saw Indiana coming back and double-teaming the post. Now we see no double-team. John Smith realizes it makes a fine move to the middle. I'm going to find out about uh, how old you really are. Remember Bob Hubregs? No. Never heard of him. You do, too. <laughs> don't, don't leave me out here alone. He looked like Hooks Hubregs from the University of Washington with that hook shot. Uh, I knew you'd get me back. <laughs> Oklahoma leading Iowa 14-8 in the first half as Iowa's hitting only 33%, traveling on Amaker. That's the fourth Duke turnover. Now, I would wonder, too, now that uh, this back new backcourt's in, in, in now with Smart on the bench, would they apply more defensive pressure? And it looks like they might like to do that because Duke is quicker at the guard line. Alford playing in the corner. Has Bricky on him. Turnaround from Thomas is short. Right. And a hell ball, the possession arrow pointing in Indiana's direction. There it is. So that, Indiana will inbound. That last play, the way Duke rotated, what happened was Amaker ended up playing against Dwayne Thomas, giving up five, six inches inside, but they rotated so beautifully to help, help him inside, he wasn't able to get that good shot. Galloway with Amaker on him. Now Alford with only one point. Thomas, good feed from Alford down in. And Thomas puts it off the glass. We'll have a chance for a three-point play. Steve Alford has one great quality, I think, in that he has such patience. You know, he knows that he's going to be out on the court for 40 minutes. And he knows at some point in this game, he's going to get open. He's going to start hitting some shots. And he just shows what a great team leader and player he is. He's found Dwayne Thomas now two or three times inside for easy opportunities. Thomas with a chance for a three-point play. Dean Garrett is out and Steve Isle. The all-purpose sixth man for Indiana has come into the lineup number 32. And Billy King is back into the lineup along with Kevin Strickland now for Duke. Three-pointer for Thomas. It's 29-24. 9.08 to go first half. The largest lead of the game was eight. Just a moment ago. Ah, good quick move defensively by Daryl Thomas. Now Alford left side. Rick Galloway, number 20. Lean-in jumper, too strong, and King with a rebound. Alford with the foul, and that's his second. We are live on a Friday night from a jam-packed Riverfront Coliseum crowd, 16,500 for the Midwest Regional Semifinal. Duke with an early lead over Indiana, 29-24. 8.41 to go first half, and the winner of this game will meet LSU here on Sunday afternoon. 
And I guess the story so far is the ability of Duke to shoot the three-pointers and John Smith's effectiveness in that down low and inside with the hook shots or taking a few steps out and shooting the jump shot. Mike Krzyzewski will lose this man next year. The only senior starter this year for Duke. What did he say about him? He said he's the type of young man you'd like to have your daughter come home with. Yeah, he said he is the kind you hope, every mother hopes her daughter will bring home. Offered. That's two. That's what I'm talking about, the patience of Steve Alford. 31-26, 8-23 to go first half. The largest lead has been eight by Duke. Hammaker, pump fake. Shot off. Oh. Rebound, Steve Isle of Indiana. Hillman directing traffic and offered cutting across the lane. There's the assist underneath to Thomas. That was Isle who tipped it back out. Hillman back to Callaway. 7.45 to go first half. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Good patience, though, offensively. And it pays off. Galloway. One of the reasons Indiana's been able to get that type of shot. We've seen Dwayne Thomas power it in. Duke likes to play top side on the post player. So if you're able to get the ball inside there, that baseline is wide open to take it to the hole. Here in Cincinnati. Whoa, whistle foul away from the ball. John Smith, number 33 of Duke. Dwayne Thomas has switched over to play John Smith, and he is playing him so much more aggressively than Dean oh, Garrett did. He's fronting him, he's getting around, he's battling him for those inside positions. You know, last year, um, Dwayne Thomas was the starting center for this ball club. And so he's had to make that adjustment and go to the strong forward position. So he has, he has that flexibility that he could play either spot. Daryl Thomas comes over and chats with uh, Bob Knight for just a second, and now Garrett comes out. So Daryl Thomas is at the line. 7-17 to go first half. Thomas has had an excellent tournament, Bill. He's uh, averaging 20.5 in the first two games. That's increased his season average by five in the game. And he works so hard for that good position down low. He knows when Alfred gets that basketball, that's when he really works because he knows he, he'll get that direct pass if he's open. Thomas with nine points gets a rest. Indiana has gone on a 9-2 run now in the last three minutes. And they've shaved what was a nine-point margin down to one, 31-30. Set the lineups for you. Danny Perry, whistle. And again, a foul underneath. This one on Martin Neslin, number 52, the 72 senior center. Indiana has Alford, Joe Hillman, Steve Isle, Callaway, and Garrett in the lineup now. Alford. See that before? He comes off screens from the top of the circle, from the baseline, everywhere. You have to have eyes in the back of your head. Duke calls timeout. 33-31, Indiana back on top now. And Duke has Billy King with the ball. Barry. Skip pass in the corner to Hamaker, who has 10. And Garrett with the rebound. Well, they've gotten cold. They haven't been able to be, they have not been effective inside Duke in the last three, four minutes. They've gone almost four minutes now without a field goal. Steve Isle, their last field goal is the 10 minute mark. Galloway, bounce pass to Garrett, double team to trap on the baseline and the foul is on Robert Gricky, number 21. Update you on the Oklahoma-Iowa score. 26-18 in the first half. That one may wind up in the hundreds. Oh. <laughs> they are going up and down the court. Nesley out for Duke and John Smith back in. Now the last time down after that timeout, 
no one played Joe Hillman. And Amaker was running around the court, just helping out everyone at the defensive end of the court. It might be something we'll see as long as Hillman is in that ball game with the feeling that they don't feel that Joe Hillman can hurt them. Hillman is in because Keith Smart is on the bench with two fouls. Alford is playing with two. And Thomas is on the bench with two. They'll reload as King goes to Amaker and looks underneath to Smith. Backs away from Garrett, puts it up too strong, and Isle with a rebound. Quickly out to Steve Alford in Indiana with a two-point lead, going to go up by four. Had to wait a minute. Callaway gets two. Well, the intensity is really picked up at the defensive end for Indiana. The, in, the defensive play inside is they're really competing in there for position with the Duke players, which they weren't doing to start the ball game. The Duke drought has almost reached five minutes. But they have to have patience, make sure they get the good shot, not a good shot. But he drew the foul with a lean in, so Steve Isle is guilty of the infraction. And now Todd Meyer is coming in for the Indiana Hoosiers, number 30. Meyer, the senior from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. 6'8", 222. And Danny Ferry goes to the line. He's improved. Danny Ferry has built his free throw percentage to 84% from 62 a year ago. He was the leading free throw shooter in the ACC this year. He also led his team in rebounding, scoring, uh, assists, and foul shooting, as you mentioned, you know, just an outstanding year, and he's only a sophomore. Means he might get a letter. Uh, he might get one. Got them both. 35, 33, 508 to go first half. Joe Hillman guarded by Kevin Strickland, number 31. Todd Meyer, number 30. Body's flying all over, and Callaway gets free. This is some team offensively, Indiana, because they go in spurts. We've seen, to start off with, Keith Smart get hot. Then we've seen Alfred get it going, and now Callaway's got it rolling. What was a nine and eight point deficit is now a four point Indiana lead. Five seconds. And the draft for Duke has almost reached six minutes now. Their last field goal came with 10.05 to go in the half. Foul underneath on John Smith. That's his third. That, that's a that's a dumb foul. You know, away from the play. Now we'll see him. He's trying to get position, and he just swings the elbow. Not very smart, especially when you have two fouls at the time. As he walked by our position here at midcourt, Tommy Amaker looked up and pointed to his head and said, Think, John, think. So Smith sits with three. Garrett gets one. At the 10 minute mark, Duke led 29-21. They've been outscored 17 to 4 in the last six minutes. Amaker. Another Duke foul underneath. On Kevin Strickland, going over the top. Ala Abdul Nabi has come in now for Duke, number 30, because of the, and the foul is on Abdul Nabi. Young man who was born in Cairo but came with his family to the United States when he was three years old, so he grew up in Bloomfield, New Jersey. That's his first, and Rick Calloway is at the line. Speaking of those who've had excellent tournaments, Calloway's average in the first two games, 17.5. <laughs> Been better than a season scoring average of 12.8. And there's mom. She's happy. She's got a smile on her face now. A little while ago, she was frowning over there. She got free tickets. Indiana has gone on a 16 to 2 run. Rejection. And they lead by seven. Uh, 
And the drought continues. They better hold on right now. It's just one pass, a shot, no patience. This is where Tommy Amaker's got to get control of the game for his team. As we said, a 16-2 run. The last Duke field goal was at 10.05. Garrett. And they got Todd Meyer underneath. Well, Robert Pricky is not a good foul shooter. Only shot 48% during the regular season. So the chances of him making a foul shot here are not very good. You know, and he's only shooting 33% in the tournament. Billy King comes back in, and Bricky will get a get a rest. Perry's going to be the shooter. Yeah, it looked like Bricky was the one though that got pounded on the play. I thought he did too. You know, and somehow Dan Ferry gets to the foul line. That's leadership. Yeah, <laughs> and he misses it. 40 to 33, 324 to go in the half. Indiana trailed at the midway point of the first half by eight, and they now lead by seven. Joe Hillman has played much of the first half because of the foul problems of Keith Smart. You see now that Duke is switching out anytime Alfred comes off those screens, even if it means one of the big people, Ferry or someone else coming out to help. How you like the pick and roll? Garrett got loose on the They're playing magnificent basketball. And they lead by nine. That's the largest lead of the game. And the Indiana contingent is on its feet. And the thing is, it all started when Joe Hillman came off the bench. Then everything seemed to fit together. And Joe hasn't even looked for his shot at the basket, but he's inspired this ball club. And the drought finally ends. That is the first shot that Duke has hit from the field out of their last eight. And they go seven and a half minutes before they get a field goal. 42-35, 222 to go first half. Galloway, two more. Galloway's got 10. Evenly distributed, Indiana scoring. Galloway, 10. Thomas with 9. Garrett with 9. Smart with 10. And Alford is a low point man with 6. It might be the happiest of all of them. That's right. Abdel Nabi gets 2. Looked like he shot Garrett. I don't think he expected it. Oh! Amaker slipped and twisted his ankle at midcourt. Underneath to Garrett. King with the foul. Garrett will shoot two. But Tommy Amaker twisted his ankle. 37-27, Oklahoma. Up by 10 with 5.35 left in the first half. Well, the key to that play was the lob pass that Rick Calloway threw over the top. I'm Dean Garrett, San Clemente, California, who was in San Francisco City College a year ago. Here's how Tommy Amaker injured that ankle. Huh. Look at the expression on his face. Now, Duke has got to do something defensively to get themselves going because right now, Indiana's just putting on a clinic. They come down, either they're getting it inside, getting the easy opportunity, or getting the easy open jump shot. Garrett controls the loose ball, and Amaker makes the steal for three. No. Hillman takes it out of Amaker's arms. And Joe Hillman, number 44, blind pass, left side, shot good. There's that Joe Hillman again. That last series of plays against Amaker, he did one thing so well. He knows he's not as quick as Amaker, but what he did is he got himself in a position where he wasn't going to allow, allow Tommy Amaker to penetrate. A seven-and-a-half-minute drought from the field has cost Duke dearly. They had a 29-28 lead, 29-21, at the 10-minute mark of the first half. And they now trail by 11. Barry. There he is again, Joe Hillman with the quick hands. Alford for three. Amaker tries to tip it. Isle controls for Indiana, and they've now got 35 seconds left in the half. 
Early in the ball game, we saw Duke was the quick team, getting the loose balls, creating turnovers. There was an example. All of a sudden now, this game has turned around so drastically. Any loose balls, anything happening, Indiana is the ones picking it up. Hoosiers have hit seven of their last nine from the field. Barry with a foul. Dad, Bob, of course, played in the NBA. You played against him, I guess, didn't you? I played against his dad. His dad also went to St. Louis University. Right. Another substitution now. Cray Smith comes in for Indiana as Bobby Knight digs a little deeper in the bench. Number 42, junior from Tipton. Well, Bobby Knight has to be ecstatic the way his team has played this first half. You know, they started off very slow against Auburn. Very similar. They were down 12, 14 points right. in the first half. 24, 10. And for whatever it is, they get themselves on a roll. And the big thing that Coach Krzyzewski felt was that the one that gets this team on the roll is Steve Alford because he can do it either scoring or making that pass. And we've seen him tonight making it on the pass. Amaker manages to get the foul from Hillman. And he'll have a chance to go to the line. We updated you on that Oklahoma-Iowa score. They've got some time remaining in the half, so at halftime, we're going to switch you out for a portion of that game from Seattle. And, of course, later tonight after your late local news, Wyoming and Fennis Dimbo against the running rebels of UNLV. That'll be live on CBS. Oklahoma leads 37-29. And we'll just take a, a sneak peek, as it were, at halftime. Hey, yeah, you and I need to do that because we're going to do the winner of that game against the winner of the second game in Seattle. Yeah, we'll see how old Bill Rafferty's doing out there. That's right. He's doing well, I'm sure of that. <laughs> Tommy Amaker at the line. Now, the one thing that Mike Krzyzewski has to do with this Luke Duda, get these teeth fixed, my goodness. Those I might have expected that from a North Carolina grad. I know, I know have the Blue Devils not lose confidence in themselves that they instill something with them that they have the confidence to come out here and that they can come back and win this basketball game because right now they're going to go in that locker room a little down four or five in the field in the first half but not much in the latter stages of the half has the ball down low double team gets it back to Amaker Strickland he's now one of four from the field and Keith Smart playing with two fouls gets the rebound and for the Hoosiers, they've got Alford, who had six points in the first half, and gets a quick two. Oh, almost. It was such a great touch. You now, for young people to watch a shooter, he, does, he shoots the ball. He always has his shoulders squared up. So does Danny Ferry. Yep. Excellent shooter, good form. But the one thing they both do is when they leave their feet for the jump shot, they come down in the same spot. And what that means is they shoot it the same way every time. Smart gets a couple. Count the basket. Offensive foul. That's the third foul on Keith Smart. See how quick the hook is. Well, I wouldn't be, think that Bobby Knight would be very concerned about putting Joe Hillman in there because he did such an outstanding job for that ball club. 53-42. Smart gets the basket. That gives him 12 points in the ball game. Nice look pass underneath to John Smith. He'll shoot a couple. We want to welcome those of you on the West Coast and the Midwest part of the country who have been watching Oklahoma and Iowa 41-40 at the half. Our score, Indiana leading by 11 with 18-40 to go in the ballgame. Vern Lundquist and Bill Cunningham here in Cincinnati as Duke led by eight at one point. But Indiana came storming back. No turnovers in the last eight minutes of the half. And they shot 64% from the field. They led at the half by 10. But the big thing in that last eight minutes, I thought, Vern, even though they did such a great job with the turnovers, is their defense. Indiana's defense just picked up another notch. The first eight minutes, we saw this Duke team able to run almost anything they wanted to do at the offensive end of the court. And everything changed at that 10-minute mark. John Smith's free throws make it a 10-point margin now, 53-43. Rebound, Ferry, quick out in the pass to Amaker, but he'll have to pull it up. He does, lets it go, hits it, 
That's what they have to do. To get back in this ball game, they're going to have to do it defensively. It was very interesting to start out with watching the Duke bench. You could tell that they were still feeling that they had a chance in this ball game, and they were going to come out and give it their best. Rick Calloway, the sophomore from Cincinnati, doesn't get the shot. And here comes Duke with a chance to get it down to six. You've got to figure Indiana's got to cool off a little bit after shooting 64% in the first half. Barry, pump fake. Shot up, oh. too strong. And that vertical lead for Key Smart comes into play. He doesn't get the rebound, but his Indiana teammates do. Now Indiana, the last two times down, it wasn't even a pass. They just went up for the quick shot. They'll probably look to move the basketball, make sure they get everyone involved in this in the second half. Galloway flashes across the lane, gets the pass from Smart, and puts it up. Galloway with 14 points. This Indiana club has so many weapons out there offensively. All five starters have the ability to score over 20 points against you. So everyone tries to key on Alfred, but I think that what we saw in the first half, he did a great job passing the ball, but they have so many other weapons offensively. What a screen Billy King just put on Key Smart. Knocked him over backwards. It was a legal screen. Well, and Strickland's shot is good. You know who you get mad at? You get mad at the guy that was playing the man setting the screen, King. Because he did not communicate with you. There's that turnover. Barry, good hustle. Strickland was going to have to pull up, though, and wait for help. 55, 47, 16, 50 to go. Underneath the John Smith, there's the hook shot again. And Smart comes out with a rebound. Darrell Thomas. That's 11 for him. Boy, he loves that box on the right-hand side of the court. <laughs> he gets it there, and that's that's his spot on the court where he's so effective. Four of the five Indiana starters in double figures. The shocker is that the one who's not is offered. He's got eight. I think what's happened tonight is all the scouting reports are being ripped up. Now they have to rethink if Indiana does advance, how do you play this team? Look at Callaway back off King at the top of the key. Knows he's not going to shoot from out there. Strickland will for three. And Garrett gets the rebound for Indiana. Well, you saw Strickland float on that jump shot. He leaned to the left. He didn't go up strong and shoot the basketball. 15.50 to go in this Midwest Regional semifinal. The winner meets LSU here on Sunday afternoon as Dale Brown's team knocked off DePaul earlier tonight. Smith, that's his fourth. And Krzyzewski, I think, was planning to substitute for him even before the fourth foul. So Smith goes to the line, or the uh, bench, rather. Now, this is a small lineup in there that Duke has. And looking at this lineup, where you have no one over 6'6", except for Danny Ferry. You have to figure that defensively, Duke is going to look to apply a lot more defensive pressure. Amaker to Ferry. Passes on the three-pointer. Off the glass, gets two. Good move. It's down to six, 57 49. 15 20 mark. Now, offensively, you would expect Indiana to look to go inside because they have such a big advantage with their strength and size inside right now. Offered trap down low. Three seconds called on. I think it was Garrett. That is the 10th Indiana turnover. And a chance for the Blue Devils. To come within four. Bobby Knight coaching the Hoosiers, of course, and his former assistant Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. Fifty-seven forty-nine chance to get within six. I think that's at four. Thomas with the foul. Okay, what they did is they screamed across the lane and Ferry was able to come across open and get the basketball. Dead ball, and time has been called for television. 14.50 to go. Down for 
Duke. They trail by eight, 14.50 to go. Team fouls three for Indiana, one for Duke in this half. Now Danny Ferry had a mismatch. Get, oh, great pass inside. Bill, he may be the best passing big man in the country as well as all of his other attributes. Well, he is a fun, he thinks pass before shot. And I think right now that, that, that becomes contagious with your ball club. Joe Hillman has come back off the bench now for Indiana number 44. This is Callaway, bites his way into the line. Watch Danny Ferry with a pass. This is a young man who really has that knack. Look at this. <laughs> I don't know how he saw the man. Ferry had 137 assists coming into the game. Second team foul on Indiana now, or rather on Duke. 57-51, 14-15 to go. For Kansas, Strickland. Loose ball comes up with it. Two on two. Strickland. Oh, good play. Now we see this quick lineup when you have these people in there. Either you're looking for the steals. The only area you can get hurt is inside and on the offensive boards. Bobby Knight has countered with a small lineup himself. He's gone with three guards now. He's got Smart and Hillman and Alford. So he saw what Krzyzewski did, and he immediately countered. That foul was on Kevin Strickland. That's his third foul in the game. Billy King comes back in, and Strickland will go to the bench. Billy King was talking earlier this week about uh, how Bob Knight came and addressed the Duke basketball team the day before they met Louisville for the championship last year. And, and he felt it was one of the highlights of his whole basketball career. And Bobby Knight told them, he said, you know, we're in the Final Four. You, for three days, you can't think of anything but basketball. You have to forget about everything else, family, etc." And he said that he was going to try to apply that speech to the game tonight against the Indiana Hoosiers. There's Billy King. Smart now with 13 points. Fifty-nine, fifty-three, back to a six-point bulge. It was ten at the half. And at the ten-minute mark of the first half, Duke led 29-21. No call? No, you know what? This is an excellent move by the official. That official is Jim Howell. Because he made a mistake. Hey, everybody makes a mistake. But he even said, let's straighten it out and get it correct. You got to applaud an official when he does something like that. Danny Ferry. Garrett rebound, Indiana. Our officiating crew again, Jim Howell, the man who corrected that mistake. Out of Washington, D.C., Gene Mangi of Rochester, New York, and Don Shea from Atlanta. Boy, there, Duke is really all over them defensively, putting that pressure. Stepping out, switching any time their screens. Here's the big matchup. Quinn Snyder's got to keep his feet down. Alford, smart off-balance shot. Oh. Rebound, Indiana, no. Rebound, Duke, Billy King. Are they going at it out there now? Danny Ferry, foul, Daryl Thomas. Trying to get that position posting up, but he pushed off, and Daryl Thomas just accepted the push and fell to the floor and drew the charge. Field goal percentage now in the second half. Duke, and they are not, Bill, a good shooting team. They're averaging 48% for the year. Another whistle. Galloway fouled by Robert Bricky, I believe. Yeah, over the top, trying to beat him to that spot across the lane, and picked up the foul. That is the fifth Duke team foul. Indiana has three in this half. You gotta watch Alfred anytime they take the ball out of bounds underneath. He drifts way out to the right, and they go underneath the foul. Thomas. Robert Bricky, number 21. to say a word. Just watch this man, 6'5", go up and block that shot.
White looks on. Shot is good from Thomas. Darrell Thomas is holding his shoulder. Ricky. Follow shot, Billy King. Ricky is playing like a man in rage now. Gwen Snyder guarding Alford, 61-55. 12 25 to go from Cincinnati. Alford to Garrett. Rebound, Ferry. Here comes Duke. Amaker pushes it up. It's a one-on-four matchup, and he takes the jump shot short. Could have gotten a better shot. I think he should have held it up a little bit there, Tommy. Well, Thomas. He's all sitting in the lean in. Yep. He had made his mind up. He was going to shoot that basketball, and he found that crease in the defense and was able to knock it in. Thomas with 15, back to an eight-point margin, 63-55, 11.44 to go. Barry takes the shot. Doesn't get it. Loose ball. And this one will go Indiana's way. Well, you saw Ferry pop out. He was wide open. That's when he should have shot the basketball. Because now he faked. And any time a basketball player has to think he's in trouble, he has to do everything by instincts. L ball, possession arrow pointing Indiana's way, so they will throw it in. Boy, the pace of this game has really picked up in the last couple of minutes. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski has a couple of words for Don Shea. Ala Abdel Nabi comes in now for Billy King for Duke. Abdel Nabi out of Bloomfield, New Jersey. Abdel Nabi had a good first half, had two field goals when Duke is really struggling offensively. Steve Alford has a string of 33 consecutive games in which he's been in double figures. He has only eight today. I think he'll get there before it's all over. Thomas shot a little short. And Kevin Strickland gets the rebound for Duke. 63-55, 11-15 to go. Quinn Snyder. Strickland. John Smith has just fouled out of the game. They got him for shoving off underneath. Mike Krzyzewski better watch himself or he might pick a tech, up a technical foul. I don't know if he wants one, but I wouldn't think with 11 minutes to play he'd want to pick up a technical foul. John Smith scored 10 of the first 16 Duke points. He had only two in this half, and he's picked up his fifth foul with 11.07 to go. Don't forget, coming up live after your late local news, Wyoming against UNLV. Following the late local news... That's tonight, a little later on CBS. John Smith is out. And he winds up with 11 points in the ball game. Now again, offensively, we're seeing Steve Alford very quiet out here. Not looking for him as much as they have been. And I think they better start getting him involved at the offensive end. Smart. Thomas couldn't get it for Indiana. Amaker has it. Three on three. Out Lost control. control. Here comes the Hoosiers the other way. Oh, boy. And Smart missed the shot. Gets the follow. Showtime. Duke timeout. Bless you, Tigers. A 10 point Indiana lead now, 10 20 to go in the ball game. Indiana led by 10 at the half, trailed by as many as eight in the first half. Danny Ferry, Abdul Nabi, Amaker. Strickland and Snyder, the lineup on the court for Duke. There's Ferry. Good patience when he caught the ball. Red was reading to see if they were going to double team. No double team went up for the shot. 14 points for Ferry. Ferry. Travel. 12th Indiana turnover. 
Bob Knight asked one of his assistants, how could he do that? Quinn Snyder, number 14. Ferry, oh, wasn't ready for the pass. And Alford picks it up. What he was going to do is he was going to make a move before he had possession of the basketball. Rick Calloway, number 20, out of Cincinnati, Ohio, the sophomore. Loose ball picked up by Danny Ferry. Outlet pass, Strickland. <laughs> it looked like he wanted to dunk the basketball. Yeah, but he knew Garrett was coming. Yeah, take the two points, forget the dunk. Down to six, 65, 59, 9, 10 to go. Snyder fouls Alford. Now, I wasn't sure if that was a foul. Oh, it was against Alford. Is that right? I, I think that was on Darrell Thomas. Thomas for setting the screen. If it was a foul on him, that's Alford's fault because he didn't wait for Darrell Thomas to get in position to set the screen and then come off it. And that's the fourth foul on Darrell Thomas. Danny Ferry back to Strickland. Ferry turnaround jumper. Abdel Nabi went up too early for the rebound, and Steve Isle, who's in the lineup for Indiana, comes down with it. Check this Hoosier lineup now. They've got Smart with the ball. Keith Smart, Isle, Garrett, Callaway, and Alford. Rebound. I'll tell you, Duke is doing the job on the defensive end. Now they have to settle down and make sure they get the good shot, the shot they want at this time. 65, 59, 8, 20. Remaining in the game. Off the backboard. Indiana gets it. And we have reached the 8.05 mark. Remaining in the game. Galloway. Foul is on Danny Ferry, and Rick Calloway will go to the line. Good, strong move to the middle. You know, as we said in the first half, that's a Bobby Knight trademark. You know, ball fake, put it on the floor with a good, strong dribble and go up for the shot. Substitutions now for Duke as Knight looks on. Billy King is back in the lineup. And Amaker goes to the line. You know, it was interesting. Earlier in the year, Bobby Knight said that he didn't think this team had the ability to get to the Final Four. And I just wondered when I heard him say that if he wasn't trying to motivate this club. Because he's got to feel, that after the first two games they played in this tournament, that they surely had a chance. Went through a late season slump. They lost back-to-back -back games on the road. Purdue and Illinois. And then they trailed Ohio State in the last regular season game by eight with eight to play and came back to win it. And then later that afternoon, when Purdue was thrashed by Michigan, Indiana won a share of the Big Ten title. 66-59. Amaker. What happened was Billy King set a nice screen. Amaker was able to float to the open corner. Down to five at 66-61. 7-24 to go in the game. Almost got the turnover again as King dived for the ball. Well, so far in this half, Indiana's only scored, what, 17 points? That's right. So 49, 39 at the half. Yeah, so it's really turned into a defensive battle. King just about got the steal. Pump fake. Alford. That's when he goes in. He's in double figures now. Fine move. Just got Quinn, Quinn Snyder out of position. Watch him step out right there. Snyder should have been denying him the basketball. Leaves his feet. Now it's history. Ten points in the game for Steve Alford with a chance to go into 11 or go to 11. And for the 34th consecutive game, Alford is in double figures. We're coming to you live tonight on CBS from Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati, Ohio, where Indiana led by 10 at the half. They lead by 8 now with 6.52 to go in this Midwest Regional Semifinal game. Bern Lundquist along with Bill Cunningham and the winner of this encounter meets LSU here on Sunday.
Foul on Rick Calloway. Indiana now hitting 54% from the field. Duke 13 points off turnovers. 14 Indiana turnovers. Amaker leads Duke with 14. And Smart, one of five starters in the lineup in double figures. There's Mike Krzyzewski, who was the captain of the West Point team, coached by Bob Knight in 1969. First time Duke and Indiana have ever met. Barry, three points. Yes, again. That's his fourth three-point shot. Ricky. There are currently 13 Bob Knight assistants who are coaching in NCAA basketball right now. That, that really is a staggering number. Well, it just tells you what people think of Bobby Knight as a coach in this game of basketball and how when you work under Bobby Knight, what you learn about this game of basketball, we're seeing it out here. The first thing you learn is defense. And we're seeing both of these teams play outstanding man-to-man -man defense. Steve Isle gets the first. And the offensive board, Callaway! And just like that, it's back to eight. 72-64. Callaway was so quick in there. It was bang, bang, he had that two points. Ricky has it snapped back. Here comes Smart. Offensive goaltending. So Keith Smart gets two more, and it's a 10-point bulge at 74-64. Indiana, 26-4 for the year. That might have been... Dean Garrett's easiest block shot of the year because he never had to leave his feet. He just extended his arm. Strickland, they've got Amaker open left side. Don't see him. Now he goes deep into the left corner. Oh, what a dandy shot. Tough shot right there. Five and a half to go in the game. 74-66, Indiana. Winner advances to the round of eight on our coverage of the NCAA championship on CBS, the road to New Orleans. <laughs> Alford, he is so smart. First of all, he had two players out on him, took the dribble, and you notice how he kept his body between the man and the basket. He wouldn't let the guy get around and get any defensive position against him. Strickland gets two for Duke. And it's back to an eight-point margin at 76-68, 4.58 to go. Just a quick recap. If you joined us late, Duke led 29-21 at the 10-minute mark of the first half. They went cold. Indiana had a 10-point lead at the half. Duke has been within five in this half. Strickland can't control the rebound. White ball. 4.42 remaining. Mike Krzyzewski's Duke team trails. You know, Jerry, sometimes I take you for granted. You're a terrific husband, a great golfer, and a super salesman. I was talking, I heard, him, I heard Brent Musburger mention the other day that Bobby almost left in 1981 to become a commentator for CBS. That would be a shame because he's so great at what he does as a college coach. And it was the injury to Landon Turner that uh, caused him to go back. Here's and decided to stay in coaching. Here's Alford, Strickland with a rebound. 4.28 to go, 76-68. Amateur with a skip pass to Strickland for three. Big one. Long rebound controlled by Ferry. Amaker says, hold it. <laughs> There's the senior making sure they get a good shot. Of course, the one he's good. Oh, what a pass. And Abdul Nabi can't get the shot to fall, but it will be Dukes to inbound. Couldn't get his steps down. Got himself a little too far underneath the basket and couldn't lay it in. Now Ferry will inbounds. Watch Ferry coming off the screens. There he is. Pops out right side. Steve Isle all over him. Skip pass in the corner to Amaker. Uh, there's the senior. He knows what it's all about. He was there last year in the finals. 
Tommy Amaker playing in his 138th consecutive game. As a starter, he has 108 wins. He does know what it's all about. How about off of the senior following? That's off Strickland, Indiana ball. I think. Nope. They're not sure. Confirmation now. Indiana. There are the two guards. Amaker with 20 and Alford with 13. Change the rolling. It looks like it's going to be Duke's basketball. Let's see Bobby Knight now. He's had a very calm demeanor all night. He sure has. And the possession arrow is pointing Duke's way. You saw that with 3.35 to go. Both teams are, Duke has two timeouts left. Indiana has four. Barry for three. Got it! Well, the reason he's so effective with this small lineup, Dean Garrett's got to go out and play him. He's not used to having to go, to go out and play centers shooting three-point shots. Duke is seven of eight from three-point range. Callaway with the answer. Oh, you hate to see either one of these coaches or teams lose a game like this. Galloway with 19 points, five point edge at the three minute mark. Amaker. <laughs> They're eight of nine from three point you range. Tell me this three point shot isn't exciting to this game of basketball. It drives coaches crazy, but I think as a fan and as an announcer, I love it. Two points at 78 76. Tommy Amaker, a career high of 23 points. Underneath, Alford. Boy, that's some move, what he did, curling around that screen set by, by Garrett and making that tough shot. And the great thing was he took it to the other side of the basket where Ferry could not try and block the shot. Strickland. Good job of boxing out by Dean Garrett for the rebound. Came right in his hands. And Indiana's lead is at four with 2.10 to go. Well, we have a lot of basketball left. It'll be interesting to see if Indiana tries to hold the ball, use a little bit of the clock at this point. And that's what they're doing, spreading the court, looking to use a little bit of the clock. He's smart. Got it. 20 points for Smart. That's just good move right there by, by Pete Smart, powering it on the baseline for the hoop. It's a Duke timeout. They've got one left. 48 left before the sellout crowd here at Riverfront Arena in Cincinnati, Ohio. Duke with one timeout left. Indiana has four. Team foul seven. Indiana still has, has only five those four, thus far. And possession arrow Duke's way. 76 Indiana Legion. Now, I would be interested to see how Indiana matches up defensively. Does Dean Garrett go out and play Danny Ferry out on the court, or do we find uh, maybe Steve Isle that picks him up and goes out? Because Garrett, that's an unusual position. Well, what we see right away. He's, He's got Steve Isle on him. Well, no. Yeah, he does. And King is not an offensive threat, so that means he can pack him in the lane and get that help defensively and be on the defensive boards. Here's Kevin Strickland, guarded by Keith Smart. Barry, jump fake. Shot not there. That's rebound Indiana. Rick Calloway, 122 to go. And the Hoosiers up by six. The problem is they're going to keep the ball in Alfred's hands, and he's an 89% foul shooter. Glenn Snyder thought he might have tied it up. I could read Krzyzewski's lips. You didn't even see it, he said. <laughs> but yet you really have to take your hat off to what Mike Krzyzewski was able to do with his team after halftime. Because it appeared the way they went off the court here, their, their chins were on the floor. But he was able to get them back into the ball game and have their spirits up high because they are a young team. Alford uses all 360 degrees of the rim. Do you notice that it's always the good shooters that do that? Because mm -hmm. their form is so good that they're going to get the good bounces. See what I said? <laughs> <laughs> all right, coach. Five-point game now with 65 seconds to go. Strickland almost double dribbled. 
Over to Ferry with Steve Isle on him. Screen from King. Looking for the three-pointers. Boy, they're doing a good job with that perimeter defense. There's two. Bricky gets two. It's 83-78. They got to force Alfred to give the ball up somehow and maybe foul somebody else or look for that steal. Double Dean. And they got Strickland with the foul. That's his fourth. Well, Ricky Callaway's a good foul shooter, too. He was he's shooting 74% for the year. His fourth foul. Don't forget, Iowa and Oklahoma still playing in Seattle. And when our game is concluded, we will take you out for the conclusion of that game. And more than six minutes remain in that Western Regional semifinal. Galloway gets the first. Now they're going to have to push it up the court, look for the quick three-pointer, apply full court pressure. That's what Duke's going to have to do. Five of six. That was his dad, Rick Galloway's dad, standing in the uh, Indiana cheering section. Strickland. No. Amaker. Over aisle, no. And Smart, way up in the air for the rebound. Strickland with a foul. I'll tell you one thing. Looks like Indiana will win this ball game. But they better not take LSU lightly. Because this is a team, Dale Brown, I don't know how he does it. Because I had the chance to see them play their first game in the SEC tournament against Mississippi State. And there's no way any would could project them being in the position they're in now. And uh, I think some teams have taken them a little lightly. But if you do, they're showing what they can do. They just beat DePaul tonight here in just a great basketball game. And they'll be ready. And they're a very confident team at this point of the year. Smart at the free throw line. As Strickland fouled out for Duke. 21 points now for Key Smart. Looks like this magnificent coaching effort for Mike Krzyzewski. A team with only one starter returning from last year's national runner-ups will finish 24 and 9 for the year. And only two seniors on this ball club right now, and there's one of them with the basketball. And Tommy Amaker tonight will go out with a career high from points. He's never averaged in double figures until this year when he had to assume a different role. And he's been at about 12 most of the season. 23 points so far this evening. Follow shot put up by Bricky. Timeout, Duke. That's their last one. So the Blue Devils are out of timeouts, and they still trail by six. Keep the steal. You know, he hasn't given up yet. Isle inbounds. Alford backcourt. Foul on Billy King. And they're calling that a deliberate, intentional foul. So Alford will shoot two. Fouls on Billy King. That's his third foul. Third foul on Billy King. And Oklahoma now on top of Iowa by two late in the second half. Don't forget, we'll be going to the West Coast and show you the final four minutes of that game, or most of them. Rick Calloway leaves. And the Cincinnati native had an excellent game tonight. Seven rebounds and 21 points, and Mom liked it. He might get a home-cooked meal tomorrow night. Alford with 17 points and four of six from the line. Joe Hillman comes in. Steve Alford will get a rest. And the final four seconds tick down. Here's Billy King for two. That's it. The final is Mike Krzyzewski. Congratulates first Steve Alford. And then his former coach, and now a man he describes as his brother and best friend in the sport of basketball, Bob Knight. Congratulates him.
Hey, Bird Lundquist, a six-point win there for the Hoosiers. The Chevy MVPs, Tommy Emmaker with his career high tonight, and Rick Calloway with 21 for Indiana. So now in the Midwest, Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers will advance on to take Dale Brown's LSU Tigers on Sunday afternoon. LSU is the only team to repeat from the final. Syracuse and Providence advance to the